Hey guys, thanks for joining again, sports card collectors and investors. Today I'm going to be talking about um, episode one and two of the Bulls documentary, The Last Dance, that came out last night. Um, I'm going to actually go into why I believe that card prices may not go up, and I'll explain why I'm going to make a correlation. Stick around. Hello, hello. Well, episode one and two are now in the books. Um, I, I, to be honest with you, all the nostalgic from the '90s came back. I think even just with, you know, the music, the images, everything they did to, in the Last Dance, how they put this together was just awesome. And there was just a lot of little things that I didn't remember about that Bulls team in particular, and even just you know Michael Jordan's story. Um, you know, and some of the cameos in it were incredible guys that I did not remember, like Bill Wennington, for example, didn't see him coming at all. Um, you know, and so it was really cool, the whole thing. The two hours just seemed to fly by. Uh, I'm sure it probably felt the same way for you guys, but just all the nostalgia coming back. I mean, I remember uh, when I was a kid, I was 13. The only pair of Air Jordans I ever owned was a 94. I turned 13 and my parents sprung for a pair of the uh, Jordan 9s, the black and red ones that had the suede on them. I, I remember in 94, they were $125, which was an, a lot of money uh, for us back then. Um, and I had those shoes for probably four years, um, you know, and I beat them up, but I didn't wear them outside for the first two years. I mean, it was serious business. So, you know, Michael Jordan means a lot to me as, as to many, you know, people just in, in, you know, because of all the childhood memories, all the nostalgia, you know, that comes along with him and, and those Bulls teams. And to be honest, as time has gone by, I had I had forgotten just kind of how somewhat ruthless the Jerry's were within the Bulls organization. Not as much Reinsdorf, although it showed with that with the Pippen contract, the fact that he couldn't really bend, and it got to the to that point of where you know Pippen wanted out, and it's kind of like you know really you couldn't just restructure that contract. I feel like in today's world. Well, certainly in today's world, you know, players are able to kind of push their way and, and maneuver way, way more obviously than, than they could back then. Um, too bad that Scotty had signed a seven-year deal, but at the same time, you know, he's just trying to look out for his family. There's a part in the documentary where it talks about his dad has a stroke <coughs> and is in a wheelchair, and they're having to figure that out. And then I believe one of his brothers, uh, he was one of 12, you know, one of his brothers also was in a wheelchair. So... He obviously had family commitments to where he was really trying to just take care of his family, and that seven-year deal gave it to him. Um, but as time went on, obviously he was vastly underpaid, <clears throat> and so I I thought it was interesting. I don't I don't even remember that. You know, as a kid, that didn't register to me um, the holdout and, and all those things. So that was a really interesting part of the documentary for me. Um, but going back to the Jerry's, especially Jerry Krause, I remember what he looked like. He, he's such a goober. I mean, Jerry Krause. And I suppose it does give him credit for team building, and he seemed to have a knack for that. But my goodness, he had a Napoleon complex. Uh, just a, you know, a small man complex to where, you know, he didn't feel like he was getting enough credit. Now, granted, it did show where Jordan and these guys made fun of him. So, you know, if they, if they were making fun of him on a routine basis, then maybe it was warranted to some degree. You know, but his comment of organizations win championships is astounding. You know, obviously the organization plays a role, but the players play the game. And so it's just to take anything away from kind of the warriors on the field or on the court, it's just not a good, a good look whatsoever. So yeah, the, the Jerry's were kind of like, my gosh, they, they fell into a fantastic situation with Michael Jordan. Everything starts with Jordan and goes out from there. So without him, you're not having any of these conversations. Jerry Krause can be the greatest team builder ever, but without Jordan, it doesn't really matter. You know, so I thought that was really interesting covering that. There's just a lot of things, again, that I just didn't remember or just didn't register with me as a kid back then. I also didn't realize how bad the Chicago sports scene was leading up to Michael coming to Chicago. And I knew that the Cubs didn't have a good team and, and all that, but really, I mean, nobody was going to Bulls games. That, I didn't realize how how bad that franchise was leading up to you know to him getting there. So just the fact that you know he brought all that fervor and all that excitement was was really cool to see. 
uh, and I'm glad that he didn't go to to another franchise. It just seems like you know him going to the Bulls was was meant to be. Uh, so cool. And the, then the you know all the stuff from the college days with you know the coaches with Roy Williams and Dean Smith talking about him. I mean, it was I've seen a lot of his documentaries to where I've seen some of that, but there was some added footage there uh, that was really cool. And you know James Worthy talking about him in practice. Uh, you know it just. They, they brought a, and this is only just the first couple of episodes, so just bringing all these guys together, you know, um, it was just really cool to see. And then, of course, it talks about Jordan's family dynamics. And, you know, they haven't really, from what I've seen of him in documentaries, I haven't seen them, seen, uh, you know, a documentary really delve into that, that piece and showing some of the footage of his dad, you know, talking about Larry, his son, and Larry could, you know, was Mr. Fix It and could fix it, and fix things, and Michael, Michael couldn't do anything. And so there was obviously some sort of a complex that was built within Jordan, Michael Jordan, that you know he had to be better than his brother, whether it be on the basketball court or, or in life. And so that's what obviously fueled him is his dad kind of picking at him and you know not really giving him that full acceptance. And like his dad said, if you challenge him, if you tell him he can't do something, then he's going to rise to the occasion. And, and he obviously use that to really motivate Michael and, and just seeing that throughout you know this documentary I was looking for more of I, I was waiting for there to be more of the um, there's all the lead up to Michael being such a horrible teammate and you know he's a tough guy and and all that and they they just kind of started it off granted episode one one and two they're just kind of setting the stage and they did that um, and it was just cool to see some of those highlights again and then how they set it up with him coming out of school and just how he was a shy kid joining a Bulls team that had a bunch of guys that were doing drugs. And I mean, it's wild. It's, you know, it was the 80s and, you know, and I'm sure that some of that stuff happens, you know, today. But just to see him living in like a little apartment, you know, his rookie season, not really doing much of anything except for just working his tail off and playing basketball. It was really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, the documentary as a whole was just awesome. Um, you know, the, the, the first, uh, first episode one and two, um, you know, I, and so I wanted to kind of bring this full circle as to what I think that's going to do to sports card prices, to basketball card prices, and specifically with bulls card prices. Cause I've been on Facebook groups where people are saying, Hey, should I pick up Ron Harper rookie cards? Which I think is funny now because as I'm watching the documentary, <laughs> Ron Harper gets yelled at in practice when Scottie Pippen's holding out you know, by Michael. And so I'm thinking like, oh, you know, if you bought any Ron Harper rookies, those just went straight down. But it, hopefully it's not that reactive, but who knows? Um, I don't think that prices are going to skyrocket from here now that the documentary has started. And the correlation I want to make to this is comic book investing. And the reason why I'm making this cor this correlation, I also invest, I dabble in it. Um, I have some kind of, I have first appearance of Black Panther, Fantastic Four, number 52. I've got first appearance of Captain Marvel, Marvel Superheroes, number 13. But, you know, so I, I don't have thousands of comic books, but I, I pick and choose strategically uh, comic book investments. And one thing that I've noticed with, with Marvel and, 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 and comic books is a lot of, the price increases and the fluctuations are based on they're based on events like movie releases and show releases and or if a character might appear in those movies or shows so it's similar to kind of this documentary in a way to where it's like okay we've got this event that we're building up to and you know we've got prices that there's hype surrounding it so prices are rising and we've seen that obviously i mean jordan's prices pippin's prices it's just gone crazy over the last 30 45 days and so you know but what I have learned from comic book investing is most of the price increase and I learned this the hard way with first appearance of Captain Marvel is once the movie hit the price is either stabilized or they they actually even dropped so be careful with this because there's some people that think like okay you know, this documentary is 10 weeks or it's 10 episodes. So we've got 10 weeks of, you know, or two months of just amazing pricing. It's going to keep on going up. I wouldn't assume that. I wouldn't assume that it's going to keep on going up. It might, you know, but there also could be external factors, other variables that, that make those prices go up or down. So it might have nothing to do with the documentary. But all I'm saying is, is if you're counting on that documentary, just pushing prices up over the next month or two, 
maybe rethink that based on what we see in comic book investing. And that's where once the movie hits, sometimes prices will continue to go up, but I will tell you prices don't typically shoot up when a movie hits unless it's a comic book movie where there was zero expectations. Actually, people maybe thought it was gonna bomb and then it actually did fantastically well, and which, which drew demand up. And so that's how the prices go up. But typically, and comic book investors will know what I'm talking about here, once the movie hits or the show hits, then that's it. You know, there's also, there's a window where, you know, let's say it's a Spider-Man movie. There's a, there's a villain, you know, there, there's, there's speculation on who's the villain going to be and who are the villains. So there's buildup on those comic books surrounding, you know, Spider-Man's villains of, okay, it's Sinister Six or it's going to be, you know, the lizard or, you know, it's going to be whoever. And those prices rise based on that speculation and because there's, there's more demand. So I would just say, you know, be careful with that. Yes, prices could go up. I'm not saying that they're not going to go up, but you might be shocked that they could stabilize. They could go down. I don't see them going down um, just because I think basketball card, sports card investing in general is just at a high, you know, to where I just don't think, you know, demand is there and it's not, I, I, there's just demand building too for the season to come back. And then I think once the season comes back, then you get a whole new influx of, of demand and people that are excited and, and the rest of it. So I don't think prices are going to drop from the documentary now starting, but my opinion is, is that the biggest price increases already happened in the last six weeks leading up to the documentary starting. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I hope that the, the comic book investing correlation makes sense or helps with this because as we have more of these things happen, whether it be you know documentaries um, or any other type of event, Hall of Fame announcements also, you know, the, these events make make a difference. So, you know, I want to kind of hear your thoughts um, and hopefully this video was somewhat helpful and I cannot wait for the next episodes of The Last Dance. It's, it's awesome and it's bringing me back to, you know, my early childhood days in the late 80s and, and 90s. So anyway, have a great day, guys, and we will talk to you again soon.